folks, Sheila here from Design Files. I wanted to pop on with a quick video to show you a great workaround if you're having a hard time with getting a decent background image that you can use as the backdrop for your mood board designs. So if the images that you have of your client's space are dark, they're on an angle, they're loaded with all of their furniture and decor, and it's too difficult to work with, I'm going to walk you through a few simple steps in this video that will show you how to create a simple empty rendering that you can use as a nice clean backdrop for your mood board designs. And then you can layer in all the furniture and decor that you want to incorporate within the space. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to just click the add design button and I'm going to jump into the floor planner. Now, if your client has given you measurements of the space or if you've gone to their home and you have those measurements, you can use our floor planner to build out an empty rendering of their space. So you can use any of the templates here. If your client has just a square rectangular space, you would just click on this template. You would click anywhere within the grid you can move your mouse out and click to release. And if I zoom in here, you'll see the measurements on each of these walls. If I need to change the measurement on the wall because it's not matching my client's space, I would just click directly into the measurement and I can put in a new measurement and then just hit enter and you'll see the wall shorten. And you can do the same thing down here. Now you can also just click on any wall and you can drag it in and drag it out and you can click on any wall and you can use the left, right, and up, down arrows on your keyboard to move the wall one inch at a time. Okay, I'm gonna click off of this one and we're gonna delete this because if your client has a space that's more complicated than just a square rectangle, then what you can do is you can use the wall tool. Click that, click anywhere within the grid, move your mouse out and then just click your way around the grid to build out a space that matches your client's home. Now, if you are using the wall tool, the one thing you have to keep in mind is that you must close it off. You cannot leave the floor plan open like this. So make sure to close off your floor plan and you'll know if you've done it correctly because you won't see the grid inside the floor plan anymore. So now that we have this space here, and again, you would be able to adjust any of these walls at any time. So you can drag them, you can use the up, down, uh, left, right arrows in your keyboard, and you can just select directly into the field. But once you have your walls in place, the next thing you can start doing is adding in your doors and your windows. So we'll start here with the doors. You'll notice the first option is just an open entrance. Click on that if you need to add a big open entrance to your floor plan. And then you'll, when you drag it out to one of the walls, you're just going to click to release it here. Over here, you'll see that you can adjust the measurement of this entrance. So if I wanted this to be seven feet, I would put in 84 inches and you'll see it expand here. And then of course, you also have the ability to add in doors and windows, and there's lots of options to choose from. So go ahead, pick the one that matches your client's home the best, click on it, bring it over to your floor plan, and you'll see that it's automatically gonna anchor itself to walls. So you're just gonna click wherever you wanna place it. You'll see the measurements on either side. You can shift it whenever you want. And if you wanna change the door swing, you can use these arrows here. And then again, for any door that you add, you can change the measurements over here. And I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna quickly grab some windows. So again, I'm just gonna find some windows that I like. I'm gonna add them to my floor plan and if I wanna duplicate them, I can. Just click the duplicate tool, bring one over here and add it. And of course, you can change the distance from floor, the width and the height to match the windows of your client's space. So now that we have the basics in place here, I'm going to go into the 3D mode up here. So we're in the floor plan mode and I'm just going to switch over to the 3D perspective. And that's going to show me a rendering of the space. So what I can do now is the nice thing about using the design files floor planner for creating the backdrops for your client space is that you can now customize them. So we can start adding in trim, we could add in paint colors, we can add in flooring. So we can customize this completely to what we want before we use it as the backdrop for our mood board design. So I'm gonna go into creating uh, or into the baseboard library here. We'll click on one of the options, click on any wall within the space and apply it to all the walls. And I could do the same thing for crown molding if I like. 
So now that I've added that in, I'm going to jump down to the paint color library. Here's the paint colors that we have available or the paint collections that we have available. And then you can just go ahead and you can pick your paint color. And why don't we change the flooring as well while we're at it? Okay. So now we've got a nice clean space. I've added in the paint color that I'm going to recommend for my client. We've adjusted the flooring. We've added in trim. We've placed the windows to match the client's home and the doors and the openings. So now before I take this any further, all I'm going to do is go ahead and save this render. I'm going to click the setup render option here. I'm going to zoom into my design, rotate this around. And the great thing about this is now I can pick the angle that I want to use for my backdrop. So let's say this is the angle that I would like to use for my backdrop. And just so you know what I'm doing here to rotate the, the room around, if, I'm, if I hold down the right key on my mouse, it'll allow me to drag the design from left to right. And if I hold down the left button, it'll allow me to rotate it. So I'm going to go ahead and take this angle right here. I also have a field of view right here, so I can zoom it out if I want. And I can actually change the sun position too. So if you want to do that, you can do that as well. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to start the render. So we'll let that go ahead and do its thing. And once I complete this render, I'm going to be able to download this JPEG to my computer. So I'm going to take this. Now here's the really cool thing. If I wanted to show my client different angles of the space, I can just modify the render, rotate my design around. I'm going to square up my lines a bit here. And now I can take a whole new render. So I could take as many empty room renderings as I like from all the different angles. And now I've got all of these that I can use as a backdrop. So I can show different mood board designs from different angles to my client. So you're just going to download those images. And if you want, you can go ahead and you can save this rendering to your project just so you have it and you can keep coming back to it and using it again and again. So we'll go ahead and we'll just save this. Down here, you can see the board renders that I have uh, saved to my computer as JPEGs. And then once this is completed, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab these empty renderings and I'm going to upload those into my personal library in my mood in the mood board software so that I can use them as the backdrop for the design. OK, perfect. So now that that's done, I'm going to go back to my project. I'm just going to click on the option here, show these images. I'm going to save these to my desktop. And then I'm just going to come back into the mood, uh, into my design files account. I'm going to create a brand new design board. This time I'm going to go into the mood board software. I'm going to go straight over to my library and I'm going to upload those empty room renderings. So here they are. When I upload these empty room renderings, I'm just going to hit the I'm done button and I'm just going to give it a name. I don't need to add in any extra details. So we'll just call this room one uh, and room two here and I'll save those. Here they are. So now I can pull this out onto my design board. I'm going to put it up into the top corner. I can see a little bit of the image has been pulled out, so I'm just going to use the background removal tool here. I'm going to pull this toggle all the way to the left to bring the full image back in. See how it comes back in? And then hit save. And then I can stretch this out. And now I have a nice clean backdrop that I can use for my designs and I can start pulling in all the furniture and decor that I want to incorporate into it. So there you go. Definitely test this out. Use that floor plan, uh, the 3D floor planner within design files. It's really going to help you create these clean backdrops that you can use for any of your mood board designs. And by using the mood board software, you'll be able to pull in whatever furniture you want into the design. You can grab images from all of your favorite vendors, save it to your library, and show your customer or your client the exact furniture pieces that you're recommending for their space and the exact paint color while you're at it. 
So definitely check out the video. Let us know if you have any questions at all. We're always happy to help. Thanks for watching.